Hey there, so chances are if you clicked on this video, you're one of those people saying, man, I wish I could make gradients in Procreate. I love Procreate, but I can't make a gradient. And you wouldn't be alone in thinking this. There are, there, there are a lot of you. So in this video, I'm going to show you three different ways to make gradients in Procreate. So you can, you can, you can stop tweeting this now. All right, welcome everyone. My name is K. Michael Russell. You can call me Kurt, that's probably easier. I am a digital colorist, and this channel is focused on making you better at color and just helping you understand color better. And one of the ways to do that is to understand your tools better. So in this video, we are going to be looking at three different ways to do gradients in Procreate. Now I've set up sort of a split screen situation here. So you guys can see my gestures over here on the left hand side, and we're capturing my iPad screen on the other, so you should be able to get all the details that you need. And we'll just start with the really easy ones. So let's say that you have one foreground color that you want to have a gradient into, you know, transparency, you know, so in Photoshop, this would be like foreground to transparent it would be the setting, I guess. So for this first method, we're going to start with the selection tool. Now that's the little, it's the little blue S up there now that I've selected it. And we're going to make sure we're on the rectangle option. I'm just going to draw a selection kind of filling in the bottom of this. And I'm just going to drop a color on here and deselect the selection tool. Now I'm going to go to adjustments, which is the little magic wand sparkly thing at the top left. Click on motion blur and just drag down. Okay. And you can see that we've got a gradient here. And you can adjust how much of this effect you get and how big and how long the gradient is just by adjusting where your finger is on the canvas and how far you drag it. You can even drag it up. Either way works. And then once you have the selection like you like, you can always go in with the, you know, the move tool and transform tool and adjust this, change the angle, make the whole thing a little bit smoother. It all works pretty well. Now the second method also involves the selection tool. So I'm going to choose selection again. Make sure rectangle is selected. Choose feather this time. And just, I'm going to increase this a little bit. Say, I don't know, 30, 40%. I'm going to draw a rectangle. Kind of color drop. Now you can see that I've got gradients this way, right? That's what feather does. It increases this transition along the edge. Now, if you drop it and it does this instead, it just means you need to adjust the uh, the, the tolerance on your color drop. So when you grab that color and drop it, drag it to the right, and you'll see that it creates that full gradient effect. So this time what I'll do is I'll make the canvas a little bit smaller, choose the selection tool again, choose feather and turn it all the way up to 100, draw your selection on the screen, and you can use the color drop or you could use a big brush, but if I brush this in now you can see that I've got another soft transition there. And then once I've got that again I can use the transform tool to put that however I want on the canvas. Now this also works with the other shapes. So if I wanted to make, a, say, a circle, for example, choose ellipse, make sure feather is set up to 100, and now I can make a circle with the same effect. Now you can also, if I go back to the selection tool, click on ellipse, turn this all the way up. When drawing ellipses or a rectangle, let's say you want a perfect circle, while you're drawing your selection, just put a finger on the canvas and it'll pop into a perfect circle. And you can also do the opposite. So let's say that I choose my selection tool, draw my ellipse here in the center, and I'll fill it in just to show you. But if I go back, hold down on the selection to pull the menu back up. That's one thing that's not really obvious in Procreate, but if you hold down the selection tool, it'll reload the selection. And just click invert. And now if I try to paint again, you'll see that now I've got the inverse. So you could make this really big and, you know, have your radial gradient at that point. And one last method to show you here, and this one involves a little bit of knowledge about Procreate, so I'm going to back up and show you a few things first. So I'm going to go to, doesn't really matter, I'm going to use the brush pen. Now in Procreate, if you're like me and can't draw a straight line very well, you can draw a squiggly line and then hold it. And what will happen at the end, if you hold it without letting up, it will turn that into a perfectly straight line. So even if your line is crazy like this, when you get to the end, before you lift your pencil, stop and hold, and it'll become a line, and you can even 
adjust the position afterward. And if you put a finger on the canvas, it will snap to zero degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So you can get perfect angles this way. I'll do that one more time because this is involves both hands this time. So draw a line, hold it, it'll snap in. And then while you're holding it, I haven't released the pencil yet, put a finger on the canvas and you'll notice that it is now snapping to all of these angles, the isometric angles and 45, I think is what it's doing here. So now that you know that trick, you can go get the soft brush from the airbrushing section. And you can probably see where I'm going with this. But now if I draw a big line across the bottom, hold it, it snaps into place, put a finger on the canvas, and it's perfectly straight. And then from here, of course, you can go in and grab the transform tool and move that all around. And if you're wondering how you could use this in some actual artwork, then I will show you guys. So let's just make a nice little blue gradient here. And I'll use the first method. It's kind of the fastest. Just use the motion blur. Now I've got this on a layer by itself, which means I also have the transparency also. So what I'm going to do is just click on this layer and copy. And then I'll go into one of my drawings and procreate. And then it's just a matter of, I like to three finger swipe down. That'll pull up this menu and just click paste. Now you can see we've got our gradient. So let's say I want this to be up at the top. Something like this. And we can play around with the layer mode. Let's say, let's put this in screen mode. And this is overdone, but you get the idea. And now if I want to paint this out of certain areas on the canvas, using a mask is great for that because I can click on that layer, click mask. It's going to add a mask. And now it's just a matter of brushing it out in the areas that I don't want it. And I could use a brush for this. I could use the selection tools for this. And let's say maybe it's too strong and I don't want it to appear on the character. Now I'm a colorist, so I've got flats down below. I can go down here and use the automatic selection to make selections in those areas. Or if I don't want the effect to be that strong, I can just go back to my mask with a soft brush and paint it out of the areas that I don't want it. I'm doing this very roughly, but you guys kind of get the idea. All right, so there you have it. Three ways to make gradients in Procreate. I'm sure there's more that I just haven't thought about yet. <laughs> so uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to like, subscribe, all those things. And I will link some videos here. How do I hit here? Do we, we do this right here? I will link videos in this area you should watch also. So <laughs> take care, guys.